Because yes, there is a, a glyph, a hieroglyph for pyramid. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Johanna, welcome back to my channel. Today, let's just dive right in, let's just dive, come here, let's just dive right in the beginning. I've been researching a lot of the indigenous and like native oral traditions of Egypt and more specifically like pre-dynastic Egypt because I think that that is where all of the secrets and all of the knowledge lies and all of the answers to all of the questions that we have about Egypt. I found some information and I'm, I'm just wondering why is this not like, major news. Why is this not being taught in schools? It's really, really frustrating. So without further ado, let's, let's get in, let's get into the, into the crack. Not crack, that's definitely not crack. Okay. I've literally had to write notes because, um, it, this is going to get a bit technical. This is going to get a bit technical. Where's my glass? Where are my glasses? I actually have glasses. Read from here. So before Egypt was Egypt, uh, the, the land used to be called Kemet and it means like the black lands and it's not anything to do with race it's to do with the soil it means like the rich fertile soil that was all around the nile at the time which is why people decided to live there because you can grow really good food makes sense and in the kemet oral tradition in their history they explain their origin story they explain all about how egyptian dynastic traditions even started and why and What's really interesting is that the, the, the Kemetology, the Kemet tradition and history is a matriarchal, matriarchal, I can't talk, Matri matriarchal. matriarchal. Not only were the women just respected and completely adored, they were also the head of the family. Like who knew? And, and then uh, through history that's been completely reversed and it's the men of the head of the households and uh, the, the lines go down the fathers, like boys first, but it used to be girls first, which makes total sense why there was so much incest within the Pharaoh dynasties, because the, the power and the lineage came through the females in the family. So if men wanted to hold on to their titles or they wanted to hold on to their power, they had to hook up with the nearest female person in their family and keep basically keeping the family which is disgusting or it, it makes sense now they weren't just like super hot for their sisters they pause the dog drinking water have you quite finished thank you they were just trying to keep their power they're trying to keep they were just trying to keep their power they were trying to keep their lineage which that makes so much more sense to me like why is that not a thing that we have in schools in fact the word pharaoh if you go back and look at the meaning of it it's from the the kemet per a which means high house and so the pharaoh we, we tend to think of pharaoh meaning king it, it doesn't mean king it means the high house and the highest person in the house at the time was the woman so pharaohs can be ladies so in Kemetism, the names of things can really help explain their origin stories. For example, tombs were called per ka. The tradition of how they buried their dead was not in pyramids. It was in tombs, which were normally either in the ground or dug into the bedrock in caves. Uh, and they were normally dug down and then covered with a stone slab called a Mustafa, which is not unlike what we do today, if you think about it. It's a hole in the ground with a stone slab. Like, we've kept the same tradition for thousands and thousands of years. These tombs were called the per car, like the house of the... the car, the dead body car thing. That's not what they called pyramids. Because, yes, there is a, a glyph, a hieroglyph for pyramid. And it wasn't translated before, I think, as directly, because it doesn't look like a pyramid. It looks like a, a kind of square with, with, I'm gonna say like a flag, a flag and a square. So pyramids were not called per cars, otherwise they would have been labeled as such. Pyramids were called pernetas, which means house of energy or house of nature. Pernetta, per na by nature house of energy, house of nature. That's just mental because if you think about it, that's exactly what the theory, the running theory of what pyramids were, that they were these energy sources, these power stations, this energy hub. The original indigenous people of Egypt 
called the pyramids Pernetas, the, the house of energy, the house of nature. Pernetas were used to generate, transform, utilize, and transmit energy. Now that's an advert for a good time if I've ever seen one. And because they literally had a word for tomb, per car, if they were supposed to be tombs, they would have called them that. End of story. Or, okay, people could go, well, they might be a temple then. But they also had a word for temple, which was per bar. Bar meaning spirit or soul and the house of the soul. And that's where the very holy ritualistic temple places were. And they were, oh, now he's eating a stick. Oh my God. Chill on the sticks, seriously. You're gonna poop sticks. It's gonna be horrendous. Where were we? Per bar. So originally there were, um, in the Kemet history, in, in their history, they say that there was locations where energy was specifically strong. For example, the site of the Sphinx used to be a, like a holy rock, a, a place where the energy was so tangible that people would, anyone could, was allowed to come and basically draw from this energy and revitalize and use it and tap into it and do all the stuff that they could do that we have no idea what it is that they did. And then as more and more people came and started to use the energy, they started to make these places more of a commodity and basically restrict them and they became the holy of holies. And they started building walls around them and gates. These, these places became the temples but the original site was the Pabar. So most of the Egyptian temples, the Pabars, they were built on these like sacred energy sites, which is completely backed up with science because when you measure the like electromagnetic energy, all of these ancient, ancient sites are built along like electric fault lines from naturally from the earth. So modern science is actually backing up the native historical record, which I think is really cool. And I think if we did more research and work into what the original stories are, rather than the the British, French, sort of Western story that, we, that we've made for Egypt, the England wanted to come and they wanted to discover ancient Egypt and they wanted to transcribe everything, but they didn't bother going to the source, which is the people who still held on to the oral traditions. I think we've overlooked so much. Also, this is really cool. So even the word Egypt, the Arab word for Egypt was alchem, and that is where we derive the word alchemy from, which again, starting to make sense because uh, the only way that you'd be able to carve and manipulate a lot of these amazing sculptures and rocks is to possibly use like some sort of alchemy, some sort of liquid science that would be able to change the the makeup of, of a stone and you'd be able to carve it in such a way. So I just think that's really cool. Again, according to the native tradition, everybody has 360 netters or inside them. We have 360 natures or energies that we can tap into and use. However, modern humans can only access four. Let me check. Nope, it's five. Of course, the five senses. <laughs> 355 netters, senses, energies we can't access. And one of the uh, secret keepers of the chemitology, one of the secret keepers jobs is to be able to go to these holy sites, these ancient sites, and help people access more of their netters. Again, this is making so much sense. Uh, when you go to all of these sites in Egypt, Every single pyramid is based and located around somewhere with serious electromagnetic energy fields and stuff that's going on around that, all linked to water and all linked to crystal. Everything about the building from the way it's constructed to the way that it's located for water to run through it and around it or under it and all, um, to the way that the whole building vibrates really, really points to the fact that these places were Pernetta, houses of energy, places where people could go to help turn on the key to their 360 netters. And uh, who knows, that would have been a vibe. You're gonna have one less netta, tell you that, for free. Even the Greek word pyramid, which is derived from pyramidios, it, it means fire in the middle. It doesn't seem to mean a tomb. Um, fire in the middle, for me, makes me think of an engine or a factory or a nuclear power plant or like fire, energy, heat, fire in the middle. Why do we think they were tombs? I think it's very possible that after these structures, these buildings 
um, stopped working, after they ceased to function, if they were from a, a period either pre-dynastic or early dynastic, they stopped working. There is evidence that there might have been some sort of accident or something in the Great Pyramid that could lead you to believe that they were, that it was broken or that it stopped. There was some sort of explosion or something. Fire in the middle. I'm thinking that these pyramids, these pernettas, these houses of energies, these houses of nature, um, however they functioned, I imagine that once they stopped, later generations still like revered them because even now you go there and you're like, um, you can respect the building even when it's not working and you have no idea what it even did. Uh, I imagine that they wanted to like honor their ancestors and they wanted to be part of that culture that was obviously so freaking impressive. So yeah, I just thought that was really super cool and uh, it was something that I've learned this week. I can't believe that we are not looking more into the native original origin stories of the countries that we are exploring and researching about. Why do we take the the British or Western translation of these ancient texts and these ancient glyphs and these ancient stories, why do we take that translation as gospel and we don't put more weight on the originals? Because I think that they are starting to reveal some big secrets. And it's really exciting. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you think. Have you heard about the Pernettas before? Um, does this make sense to you? Um, if so, just write me a comment because I'm going to dive in there and get talking with you. And I will see you next week. I'm working on some more collabs. I'm working on some more videos. I'm doing a ton of research. Sorry, it takes a little time uh, because I want to do these right and I want to make sure I'm fact checking. Um, they just take a little bit of time. So bear with me. Wonderful. I love you all. Happy hunting. I'll see you next time. I'm off to revise.